Hello friends and welcome back. I'm Shannon Makes and this is the behind the scenes video for the Coquelicot skirt. If you have not seen the original video which came out last week, I do highly recommend to go watch that one first and then come back. This will all make a little bit more sense. So what I thought we could do for this week's video is actually take a look at the footage from last week and sort of I'll go through it with you and give you a little bit more insight onto what I'm doing in terms of construction and how the skirt is going together because while it was absolutely amazing and super fun and very insightful to listen to the conversation with Melanie, it did not leave a whole lot of room for me to give any details on what I was doing as I was making the skirt. So I thought we should maybe go take a look at that video. I'll give you some nice narration as to what I'm doing and then in the second half of the video I will touch on things that I did not cover during the first half so answering some specific questions that you guys had in the comments. So let's jump right into it and take a look at the video from last week shall we? All right, so I kind of figure we can skip past all of the intro stuff. We don't need to go over the intro. Let's skip right to the part where I start printing off the pattern. Okay, so the first thing that I wanted to touch on as I'm watching this footage of assembling the pattern is that I got plenty of comments from people who were saying how much they absolutely hate print at home patterns, they can't stand assembling them, and so I did think it was worth pointing out that this pattern comes not only in A4 slash uh, US letter, so eight and a half by 11, but it also comes in A0, which is the copy shop size, so you can send it off to have it printed in like you know the giant sheets of paper so that you don't have to deal with cutting it out yourself. Well, I mean, you still have to cut out the pattern pieces from the giant piece of paper, but that's kind of the case with all patterns. But you don't have to deal with like taping together a bunch of little sheets of paper. And it also comes with a projector file. So for those of you who want to use it with a projector, you can basically assemble this pattern, cut it out any way you want to. Melanie makes it super easy, very customizable, which definitely seems to be a theme. So if you are someone who loves this pattern but can't stand the thought of taping together a zillion pieces of paper, this could be an option for you. I also wanted to point out that uh, what you see me doing on screen in terms of my method of assembling this pattern is not the only way to go. There is another, there are a few different methods, but there is one other method that I do sometimes use and also that one of you mentioned in the comments, which I think is a great tip. There is a method where you can just cut the corners off at a 45 degree angle and then you can line the pattern pieces up that way. It is much faster because you only have to cut one corner, sometimes two, depending depending on how things are laid out. Um, it goes much faster, but I personally don't like it. One, because it doesn't look as nice on camera, but also two, because it's a little bit harder to store the patterns that way. You get a lot more areas that are doubly thick and they don't fold nicely. And for me, I like to hang my patterns up on pattern hooks. And sometimes I have to fold them along like the crease lines. And so it just find it works less well for me. But if you just can't stand it because it's so slow, then look up the method where you cut the corners off and that could be a good solution for you. Next I got a couple questions on the fabric that I used for this skirt and I unfortunately don't know the fiber content. I don't care enough to do a burn test. I mostly went with the fact that it had a nice hand, good drape, and it was super cute. Uh, I will say that I got it from that fabric warehouse that I made that video about several months ago um, and so if you watch that, well if you haven't watched that you should go watch it. But if you have watched that, you'll know that the way that they label their bolts is not always the most clear or 100% accurate. So when I pulled it out, it was uh, in the wool section or like there's a section that's kind of wool adjacent. So sometimes they're wools, but sometimes they're not. Um, based on the way that this ironed, I would say that it is probably a very large percentage wool, um, but also I think pretty sure there's some spandex in there because it was just way too stretchy to be pure wool. Uh, not to mention that the fact that there's that little metallic strand running through there, which is so, so pretty, but obviously also clearly synthetic. So I'm not super fussed about it, but I'm sorry, I can't give you a more clear answer on what the fiber content is. Mm, I'm so excited about this fabric. It's just so pretty. 
Then here you can see me putting my sewing table to good use with that hidden ironing board compartment, which I have to say I absolutely love. If you didn't watch me build my sewing table, you can go back and watch that also. But uh, I did decide to insert this little extra shelf to hide my ironing board. And I have to say, I love this feature. I use it all the time. I will be doing a studio tour here at some point of my itty bitty tiny little apartment studio that I sew in. But I have to say that it's having such a small space and it's also not only my sewing space but the other part of the room is the bedroom it's really nice to have a spot to just like hide things like that and not even hide like that's where it belongs when i'm not using it so 10 out of 10 would recommend uh also would recommend ironing your fabric before you cut things out then, as I did briefly mention in the video, having something like this tartan fabric does make it really easy to line things up on the grain and on the cross grain, which is super handy because, you know, it has such an obvious pattern that you do want to be able to line things up. So at least if it's really obvious when it's crooked, it's at least really easy to make sure it's not crooked. I will say that the downside of having such an obvious pattern is that it will make it really obvious if it is off off green if it's a little bit skewy or wonky a little bit um, which is actually one of the reasons that I decided that I really didn't want a center front seam in this skirt the way that the pattern pieces and the instructions are set up and written out it does have you putting a center front and a center back seam and I just didn't really want to do that I didn't want to do one extra step of pattern matching I had I thought enough fabric to cut everything on the fold so that it could just be um, instead of having eight panels for Ruby I thought I could do it in like sort of four panels but with that in mind I did in fact film a little PSA that didn't make it into the final video so I'm going to insert that right here for your viewing pleasure so one thing to keep in mind if you are going to like me cut your front panel on the fold instead of two separate panel pieces is that if your pattern happens to include seam allowances which this one does is that you need to actually make sure you don't cut those seam allowances on the folded edge so Fortunately, this pattern piece actually has the seam allowance lines marked in a faint dashed line, which made it super easy for me to go in, take my X-Acto blade, and using the back of the blade, so not the sharp edge that's supposed to cut, but the other edge, I was able to score along that dashed line and fold that seam allowance out of the way, which gave me a new, clean, fresh edge that I could then match up with the fold of the fabric. And that way I made sure I didn't cut too much fabric on accident when cutting that panel out. Just thought I'd pop in here and remind you that because I myself almost forgot. So there's a pretty good chance that someone out there might equally tend to forget. So remember, if you're cutting on the fold, fold your seam allowances out of the way. So now that we've averted one teeny tiny little mistake, we come up on the moment where I realized my massive mistake, which was, of course, misreading the yardage chart. Now, if I'm being completely honest, in retrospect, even if I had read the yardage chart correctly, I actually probably would have kept going in exactly the same way that I ended up doing the skirt, which is to do it in six panels instead of eight. It was still kind of a silly mistake to make, but uh, like I said, it, it required some creative problem solving and that's not the end of the world. Sewing is not about not making mistakes. It's about dealing gracefully with the mistakes you make. On that note, if you are in the middle of a rough time sewing, I do highly recommend that you go look in the comments section below where I asked people what were their latest sewing brain fart. There are some amazing answers down there. I'm pretty sure I relate with all of them, have done several of them myself, but it, it might make you feel better if you're like just having one of those moments where you're like, why, why did I do this stupid mistake? Uh, go read some of the comment sections. It's very, maybe, uh, you know, heartwarming to see that you're not alone in this. Everyone is making silly mistakes. It's literally just part of the process and it's completely unavoidable. So then as you saw in the video, went back through 
and kind of tried to identify, okay, which of these pattern pieces don't I need at all because they're for view A, which pattern pieces are the ones that are gonna be super visible on the outside of the skirt, and then which ones are probably able to be hidden on the inside. So that was the inner waistband and the pockets. So with everything sorted into three piles, put everything that was purely for view A out of the way, and then um, Trish played around with laying things out and seeing how much I could squeeze out of the original orange tartan fabric. And fortunately I was able to get everything that I needed out of that. So then I went in, could finish cutting everything out, got really lucky and found that brown cotton fabric that was uh, at least complementary. You know, it didn't completely stand out against the orange fabric. So that worked really, really well. And let these skirt panels hang overnight, you know, came back at it the next day with a, a fresh brain and, you know, ready to do some creative problem solving. So the next day I came back and started with the pockets. And while I mainly followed the instructions for these, I do have some tips on how I made it a little bit easier. And I'll go into that because I did have some people asking questions about the pockets. So the first thing is that 18th century pockets and the binding of that internal slit is known to be notoriously annoying. So the first thing that I did was instead of just cutting a slit, well, I started with cutting a slit, but then I went back and looked at it and I actually opened it up. So instead of a straight line, it's kind of like a small teardrop shape. So I cheated it a little bit so that that internal corner is not quite as tight as originally. And then the other thing I did was I made my binding much thinner. So I originally tried it at the width that the pattern suggests because I just wanted to follow the pattern and not like think about things. And so I sewed it on and then had a really hard time making it look nice, like really hard. So then I went back, you can see me on film, like cutting it midway through the process, trimming it down. That definitely made it a lot easier to turn that corner. The other thing that I did was I sewed the straight parts of the pocket with my machine, but then I went in and did the curve by hand. Honestly, it might've been easier to do the whole thing by hand, but I didn't want to. So did the straight with the machine, both of the straight sides, and then like went and did the the, the curve by hand both on the front and on the back so same technique and you can see here in this shot the right pocket is my first pocket and the left pocket is my second pocket and you can see the second pocket is much cleaner because I very much went to school on the first one learned some lessons how I wanted to do it the second one looked much cleaner and then other than that, uh, for the pockets, I assembled them with French seams just so like everything was clean and hidden on the inside. Uh, Melanie does suggest a few different ways of doing the pocket and I just decided I wanted to do it with French seams. It turned out pretty well. Obviously French seams don't do corners specifically well. So there is one little corner of the pocket that's slightly bulky. It's way less bulky than say having a phone or a wallet in my pocket. So. I did that and I also did it because I knew that they were going to be maybe possibly more visible because of the way I was gonna have to do the center panels of the skirt with my yardage error and everything like that, which we will get into in a second. But before we get into that too much, we can touch on the inner waistband. And obviously that was another one where I just had a complete brain fart and sewed the loops onto the wrong side. Uh, I think everyone has done something like that at some point. I did not realize it until I had um, already not only sewn everything together, but also graded my seam allowance. So I had gone in and trimmed the seam allowance on one of the sides super, super short, thinking like, oh, it's gonna be great. I'm gonna turn it inside out and it's gonna be super easy to like iron down. It's all gonna lay flat. And then I turned it inside out and well, kids don't do this if you make your own skirt. <laughs> So then we're almost at the point where I have to deal with my weird uh, mid panel pocket situation. But first did have to take the skirt panels down, which at this point had been hanging for two days and trim them up. 
Now, the instructions have you assemble the skirt first and then let it hang and then trim it up, but I personally like to do it before anything is assembled because I find it just infinitely easier to trim things up when all the panels are separate and not assembled. And actually, Melanie sent me a nice message on Instagram after having watched the video saying that she really liked the order that I chose to do this in and that um, she might do it like that in future, future patterns. So that was actually kind of fun. And I do recommend that you do it like this if possible because it's just so much easier to trim them down. And I do also definitely recommend that you let them hang at least overnight, if not 24 hours. So with everything all trimmed and leveled out, I could not avoid it anymore. It was definitely time to tackle my mid panel pocket problem. And I did get some questions on this. People were a little bit confused about like, why did I have to cut a slit in the panels? Why couldn't I have just like sewn them all together and used the seams as they were and inserted the pockets, you know, where there were already seams. And it's gonna get maybe a little bit confusing to explain this. So I'm gonna try and use some visual Aids, but basically the two panels that I cut out at the beginning that were on the fold so they're taking up the yardage of let's say four panels even though they're in two pieces um, we're gonna call them four panels they're just joined naturally on the fold and the way that I cut them out was that the fold was going to be the center front because I wanted the straight of green where the you know tartan pattern is running nice and straight to be in the center front and in the center back i just think it looks nice that way i don't really want the pattern to be like super skewy or weird in the most obvious visual part of the skirt so if i have the center front and the center back on the straight of grain and that's two panels in the front and two panels in the back i kind of have no other choice about how I want to uh, put the other two panels. They kind of have to go in the sides. But then if I would put the pockets in on the seams and the pockets would be uneven and it would be like oddly gathered in the front, it would just be super goofy. And I'm hoping that the visual aids are helping me explain this. But basically, you know, I kind of had no other choice but to take those two last panels that I cut out and insert them on the very centered on the sides of my hips. And then if they're already like that, in order for the gathers to work and be even and also keep that straight of grain in the center front and the center back, I kind of had to split those panels open down the middle and put the pockets in the middle of them. There just wasn't any other way to do it. There wasn't any other way that I could think to do it that wouldn't totally screw up the green lines, let's put it that way. So uh, with that having kind of been determined already, the only way that I could think to do it nice and cleanly was what you saw in the video. So I folded those two center panels in half. I pressed them that way just so that I could have a nice visual line to cut on. I measured how long and how deep I'd have to cut so that the slit was slightly shorter than the length of the final pocket. And then to treat those raw edges, on the one side, I took a super, super thin little ribbon and first sewed it down very close to the raw edge. And then I ironed it under, like just folded it under. So at this point, the ribbon is hiding the raw edge. And then I stitched it again. So on the front of the skirt, you have just one little seam line. And then on the inside of the skirt where you see the ribbon, the ribbon has two stitch lines on it. So that took care of one side of the pocket. And then I could have, I tried to use the same ribbon on the other side, but the other side of that slit is where you have to attach the pocket. And there just kind of wasn't, <laughs> the ribbon wasn't wide enough to do both the job of hiding the raw edge and attaching the pocket. So I had to use a wider ribbon and I was super lucky that I had a wider ribbon that was in a good enough color. So then what I did was I first sewed the wide ribbon down onto the raw edge of the skirt and it was kind of, half half so it was covering half of the ribbon was on the skirt and half of the ribbon was just you know empty by itself and then i turned the skirt over to the back side i used the pocket to hide the raw edge so that none of the raw edges were exposed and it also used it to help hold the pocket onto the skirt and then turned it back to the front side and then this is these are the shots that you see of me hand stitching the thick wide ribbon down to the pocket itself 
So that's kind of what I did. And so on the one side, you have the very thin ribbon that's only visible on the inside. And on the other side, you have the wider ribbon. It's visible on the outside. It has visible hand stitching on it, which I personally don't mind. And then if you look at the inside of that side of the skirt, you can just see that the pocket is hiding the raw edges on the inside of the skirt. And I think it was a very elegant solution. Um, the one thing that it does lead to is there is inevitably a little bit of puckering at the very bottom of that slit because you've just cut a slit in a flat piece of fabric and then turned both pieces of those fabric in. So there's no way that you're kind of kind of get that bottom of that slit to lie flat. But honestly, it's a circle skirt. Like there's so much volume in it that that little tiny pucker which i then secured with that arrowhead tack uh, it's completely invisible unless you really lay the skirt panel out flat and like try to iron it or something then you see that there's a little bit of like a, a, a folded pucker in the fabric but uh, also would highly recommend that arrowhead tack i think it was super useful really good in strengthening uh, that part of the skirt that would be under a lot of stress and I was worried it was going to potentially like rip the fabric more even though you know I did the best that I could to strengthen it with the ribbons I think adding that little tack was definitely the way to go so then after that I joined all the panels together I decided to do it with French seams because I really like French seams but you can definitely join them together however you want to and then the front section was gathered the back section was gathered and I I like to do this with two rows of gathering stitches. I find it just makes the gathers behave that much better. Um, and then you attach the inner waistband to it. I won't go into too many details because the directions are quite good. They have really nice illustrations, um, but basically it's very well marked where you have to line up the gathers on the skirt panel with the various parts of the inner waistband. So there, are, you know, it's marked where it needs to hit the seam between the waistband and the pocket, everything like that. So that's very easy. Then you just sew that down. And then the next thing that I did was I did the hem of the skirt. And this is my favorite way to do hems on skirts like this that are like kind of lightweight circle skirts where I don't want a very heavy or deep hem. And that is basically, I just make sure that that everything is all nice and level and the length that I want it to and then I serge around the entire bottom edge and then I fold it up and stitch it down and here in the video you can see I'm stitching it by hand with a herringbone stitch but I've also done it with uh, the machine and a normal straight stitch and that works really well too it's really great um, it just makes it a lot easier because often with like circle or circle-esque skirts you have such a curved hem that if you fold up a lot of fabric you get the fabric kind of puckering and it doesn't want to sit well and behave and then you have to try to like gather it or steam it into shape and like if I don't want a lot of weight on my hem, I just do it this way. It's so fast, it's super clean. Obviously in the video I did it with black thread, so if you look closely at the underside of my skirt, you can see the stitches, but if I would have done it with a matching thread, it would honestly be invisible, and from the outside of the skirt, it's completely invisible. So what are you, what are you doing looking up the inside of my skirt anyway? Then the outer waistband gets attached because of course there's the inner waistband with the lacing loops and then there's the outer waistband that's like the visible aesthetic portion of it. Uh, and there are also very good instructions for that. Plus it's a pretty classic way of attaching waistbands. So you can go watch the video again if you would like to see me do it, but it's very standard and the instructions are really good. So after that, the only thing that's a little bit tricky is if you have really long lacing ties for tying it, uh, those can be quite annoying to turn inside out. Uh, and what I tried to do was I tried the technique where you sew a little thread into the farthest point of the tie and then you just pull that thread and use it to just pull everything right side out unfortunately the three times that i tried to do it that thread broke or it wasn't so down well enough it just it didn't work whatsoever like all three times i went to pull it and uh ended up with just a loose thread and had to turn it by hand anyway uh, and then so for if you don't use the thread i highly recommend something like a knitting needle so it's long and skinny and kind of pointed but not so pointed that you're gonna break through the stitches and i kind of use that as a tool to help me 
turn the ties inside out. And for me, I know that I like to tie things on my side. I don't like it in the front or the back. I don't love the aesthetic. I don't like having a big knot in my back when I'm sitting on a chair. So I made one of the laces really long and one of the laces a bit shorter and it ties on my side, super cute, really easy to go. And that's basically, that's basically it. So now answering some of your questions here, we have one from Lani in LA who asks about the bulk in the seams, especially the waistband because they have uh, some nice thick wool that they'd like to use, but not sure about how the layers are gonna hold up and if it's too bulky. So what you can see is you can see that especially in the waistband area, I am grading my seams allowances a lot. I'm getting rid of as much bulk as possible. Another tip for that would be that if you're going to interface it, uh, you can see that I actually don't interface my seam allowances. I interface the main portion of the fabric and I leave just enough that some of the interfacing gets caught in the stitch line but that the rest of the seam allowance is completely free of interfacing. That's also for bulk. And then the third thing that I would say would be that you can substitute other fabrics like I did for the internal portions of the skirt. So the inner waistband, the modesty panel, the laces, that could all be from a matching cotton that would be so much thinner, would make it really a lot easier to deal with the bulk. Also additionally for the external waistband, the inside of the external waistband could be something like a grow grain ribbon or a twill tape and that would be nice and thin and you wouldn't have to deal with any raw edges and it would also kind of serve the purpose of the interfacing in terms of they are pretty resistant to stretching out so your waistband won't get stretched out. So that is my tip for that. Next, we have someone asking if the modesty panel in the front falls if it's only attached on one side and it does not fall. The interfacing helps it stay in place. Like I didn't have any problems with it. The one thing I will say is that I did actually go in and sew a little snap to the opposite corner of the modesty panel and the waistband and it wasn't even actually just to hold it up during the day because having a snap there kind of defeats the purpose of having it be adjustable, but it was actually purely for the sake of putting it on because what I would do is I found that it was kind of annoying. You'd have to open the laces really wide to step into the skirt. And then it was kind of annoying to like try to pull the weight laces tight where you have like, you're trying to hold the skirt up with one hand so it doesn't fall and then trying to take the slack out of the laces. I put a little snap in that upper corner and that way I step into it, I snap it closed and then I close it a majority of the way and then I can unsnap it and like uh, adjust it how I want. Now obviously that works for me because I don't need a ton of adjustability in my skirt. I don't have a lot of waist fluctuation but I do figure that like even on days where I'm bloated I could like I don't mind to like suck in a little bit, snap it really quickly just take the slack with the laces and then unsnap it and kind of like let it settle to where it's comfortable. So that's an option. It might not work for everyone, but it's what I like doing. But no, I did not find that the modesty panel wanted to fall. It's quite stiff and it's sewn along the entire side of the side that it is attached to. So Mari asks if the belt is necessary. I don't know if she means the inner waistband or the outer waistband. I assume she means the outer waistband with the ties. And like uh, Melanie said in her interview, the ties are not necessary. She has a blog post with a modification to switch them out for D-rings. Although she did tell me that in the blog post, she made them out of leather. And that meant that when she put it through the wash, the leather bled a little bit. So she did say, maybe keep that in mind and you might actually want to make it out of fabric instead of leather if you do go for that D-ring modification. Then someone else pointed out that I do a lot of hand sewing and asked uh, why I choose to use it when I do. And I will say that first off, I generally like hand sewing a lot. So it is mostly just a personal choice and you do not need to hand stitch a single stitch in this skirt. You can do it entirely by machine. 
When I used it on the pockets, I did really find that sewing that little tight corner curve of the pockets for the binding was so much easier to do by hand. It gives you much more control and just a cleaner finish. So for me, if I was going to only sew one part of the skirt by hand, it would be that tight curve of the binding of the pocket. For other things, I just do it because I like it and I enjoy it. So for the hem of the skirt, that I've done other skirts entirely by machine and I just decided that I wanted to do it by hand. And then things like sewing the ribbon on to the pocket and the whole side panel thing, that was partly because I did feel like I had a lot more control, partly because I like the way that it looks and also because I enjoy the process. So it's definitely sort of a, a balance of things. There are definitely points where I would do it and I find that it gives a lot more control, especially in tight corners but there are other parts where I just do it because I like the way it looks and I find it very relaxing. I did have someone ask me about whether it was essential to use interfacing for this pattern because they didn't have a bunch and it was not necessarily super accessible for them to get interfacing and I will say that while you don't necessarily need iron-on interfacing, I do think it is beneficial, at least in the modesty panel, to have some sort of interfacing, even if that's another piece of fabric with a nice tight weave, just to give that modesty panel like a little bit more body and stiffness because as you like lace it closed, it does kind of want to like crumple and if it doesn't have enough stiffness, I do worry that, you know, throughout the day as you're wearing it, it would just kind of like crumple and mush and end up wadded up instead of sorting, sort of sitting nice and flat against your stomach so I would recommend definitely using something for interfacing but it doesn't have to be iron in interfacing it could be you know just another piece of nice stiff fabric with a nice tight weave that you're going to sew in. So that's pretty much gonna do it for this behind the seams. I think it's already a quite long video. Thank you so much for watching. And if you haven't already checked out my 1911 skirt make, that's another fun skirt with again, a shortage of fabric. So definitely go check that one out. And otherwise I will catch you in my next video.